Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jumma mubarak to you all. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. In Ahmaduhu and Nasain, who wanna stow for who, and I would be lahi min Shururi and Fusna, men say at a malina. May add Hilla, who fell a modilla, who may you little who fell a hadilla, when I shed a la ilaha in the law, the who lash be kalahu, or I shed a na Mohammedan, Abdahu or Sulu, Salah, my name Salam. All praise is due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness, we seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. Whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah who is the one and has no partner. And I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad is Allah's servant and true messenger. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves. And do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasir li amri wa halul uqtata min lisani yafquhu qawli. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana innaka anta al-alimul hakeem. Pray that may Allah open my chest, make this task easy, and loosens the knot of my tongue, that these words may be understood. And glory be to you, O Allah, glory be to you, that we have no knowledge except that which you have taught us. And verily, you are the all-knowing, the all-wise. Again, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, such a blessing to be back with you all, wishing you and your families a blessed Juma, whether you're here in this space or connecting with us at a later time or in another way. Uh, and so uh, we're coming out just a uh, over a week or so from Eid al-Adha and observing uh, this blessed holiday, observing the blessed 10 days of the hijjah and lifting up this element, this value, this concrete kind of part of our faith uh, that is the uh, aspect of sacrifice. And we really had a chance back in Eid to lift up this topic more in depth and in more detail uh, and the importance of it, not just with respect to the uh, sacrifice that is being commemorated or honored or reflected on in Eid al-Adha and in that time, but of the nature of sacrifice as a part and parcel of the walk of each of our faith, uh, faith, faith experiences, that part and parcel of each of our um, faith just journeys, that when we think about uh, our uh, experience as people of faith, as Muslims, that what uh, comes to mind for us in terms of the markers of that faith or the components of that faith, what Eid al-Adha lifts up and what the uh, essence of sacrifice is within our faith is one that's not just relegated to one day out of the week or one holiday out of the year or just a particular um, you know finitely like limited uh, element but one that is actually uh, in practice is one that uh, is in, is just a part and parcel uh, through and through of our faith uh, throughout through our daily lives that the things that we do, in our faith, the way that we are just living our faith, the fact we are just being uh, our, 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 our whole selves in our, in our uh, Islam is in and of itself a sacrifice. But uh, these, the, the, the holiday and the stories and the centering and the lifting up of this shows that the sacrifice is no uh, light matter. It is something that is a, uh, a very, uh, you know, very deep and very profound kind of an action. It, it is something that has uh, very strong ramifications, but is something that is to be taken very seriously, that even if it may be, it feels to us like a mundane kind of a sacrifice, just that aspect of sacrificing in, in, in the way of carrying oneself, carrying one's faith, uh, has profound meaning and has profound consequences in a sense. And so for us, in revisiting today the aspect of sacrifice, we simply just want to lift up how in looking back on Eid al-Adha and looking back on that narrative that is oftentimes lifted up of uh, the quintessential sacrifice or, or, or this kind of like paragon sacrifice, we sometimes uh, feel that we are 
a bit disconnected. We we can't relate to uh, that type of a sacrifice that you know where where Ibrahim was ready to sacrifice his, his son um, in in an act of devotion. That uh, that's something that we could not experience, and and you know it's, it's something that we can't necessarily relate to because oftentimes these narratives, these stories, and uh, these these traditions around sacrifice are portrayed very much in a black and white robotic uh, sense with devoid of any human experience. And so we forget and, and oftentimes do not have the chance to see where are the sacrifices um, that uh, we might be making or the sacrifices that we may uh, feel that we need to make or sometimes are not cognizant that we're making. Where are these kinds of reflected in uh, the, in our stories, where where do where do these kinds of sacrifices come into play? And when we looked at and, and lifted up in, in in that sense of uh, the fullness of Ibrahim's sacrifice, we saw that it was one that was not devoid of human emotion. It was one that was not devoid of uh, that that full human experience of of having to negotiate this. It was not devoid of any of this. Um, nor was it devoid of several other sacrifices and other individuals sacrificing to get into that moment. It was a very layered and complex experience that crescendoed into this moment that was seen as, you know, the sacrifice that was then commemorated to this day in, 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 in Eid al-Adha. So when we look back and look at this element of sacrifice, we, we lift up today, inshallah, and as we revisit it, of asking ourselves that when we look at our faith, do we think about it and we look at our experience as Muslims? Do we see our faith? Do we see our practice as one of sacrifice? And if we don't see it as sacrifice, why not? What is, what is holding us back from seeing it as sacrifice? Because if we look into our faith from the basic roots of it, just in the aspect of being able to walk in it sincerely uh, in, in, in any context, it requires a sacrifice. And a sacrifice is not just something that, you know, you can write a check off for and that's a sacrifice or that's that, you know, something that doesn't prick or doesn't hurt or doesn't, you know, uh, cause a little bit of discomfort or whatnot. Sacrifice inherently in and of itself and its meaning is something that that is a part of you that is given. It, it does have a little bit of a pain. It does have a little bit of discomfort. It, it has those degrees. It has that emotional experience. It has that fullness that comes with it, which is what makes it a sacrifice. And uh, similarly, in, in Ibrahim's context, that it was such a huge sacrifice, not just because, oh, it's a, another human being that is being sacrificed, but who was that human being to Ibrahim? It was his blessed son. It was his son who he had prayed for for who knows how many decades. It was his only son at that time that uh, he, he, he didn't have a nation. He didn't have a community. He didn't have a huge support system. He just had his family. And it was this son that uh, was, being, uh, was being shown in his, in his dream to sacrifice. So what, what did it all entail? That, it, 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 that sacrifice was showing um, something that, that meant quite a bit. That, that, that had uh, a significant attribution, a significant meaning to the person who had to make that sacrifice. And for each of us, when we think about our walk of life, when we think about our practice of Islam, we see that as exemplified by our Prophet Sallallahu as exemplified by those who had walked this path before, that the walk of faith is not one that is devoid of sacrifice, um, but that it requires it day in and day out. It may not, it may not be the, you know, kind of uh, blockbuster kinds of sacrifices that, that are something like this in the pinnacle way, but it does require a daily kind of a sacrifice. And so when we reflect on this, inshallah, when we look from this story going forward, a takeaway for many of us is often asked, well, what are you sacrificing, right? What it, it's oftentimes just told us that, told to us that Ibrahim was ready to sacrifice his child. He was ready to sacrifice that which he was both beloved to him. What are you doing to sacrifice it? And it becomes very black and white. But to 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 give it some a, a bit of that truth in a sense that Ibrahim was ready to sacrifice his son, was ready to sacrifice the one who was most beloved to him, but did so and was ready to do so in a way that was not devoid of his humanity. Was one that. Uh, if you look in the Quran where he 
reaches out to his son, says, I've seen a dream. What do you think about this? He asks his son or he reaches out to his son. What do you think about this? What, what do you make about this? He could have easily tricked him and just said or just said, hey, I'm your father. I've seen this. Let's get let's get going. Allah has commanded this. But you could see there's some a bit of a, a negotiation, a bit of a, a, you know, wanting to process this out. And so even within Ibrahim's, you know, large sacrifice, there was the fullness of humanity that was present when Ibrahim took his uh, his wife Hajar and took um, Ismail, who's you know the 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 baby version of, of this you know, young lad that he has here now, uh, to the wilderness of of Mecca, to the to the valley of Mecca, and leaves them there. And Hajar calls out that as Allah at, told you to leave us here, um, has Allah instructed you to leave us here? And her fame, and when he says yes. Our famous response being that then Allah will not cause us to be lost, but thinking what necessitated that question, what brought about that question, if not a degree of uncertainty or concern. Obviously, you have a child, a toddler in the middle of the wilderness, what is going to come to mind in that way? And so thinking about how these sacrifices that uh, were, were, were being shown and being highlighted and being exemplified and lifted up and told to us and instruct to us that sacrifice like because they already sacrificed but sacrifice like them in the way that they did not just make the biggest sacrifices that were there in the in the quantities and like the the you know the most grandiose sacrifices their sacrifices were so significant because they were uh, they 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 even in their fullness of their humanity and their fullness of their conscious and uh, and their experience they were also getting into a space, they came to a space that was fully intentional, that was fully accepting. And we see that when we talk about Islam, when we talk about a religion that inherently in and of itself connotates not just peace, but submission, that a, uh, a submitting to the divine, a submitting to Allah. We see in uh, the Quran where Allah tells us about the sacrifice of Ibrahim, that when they came to the space to uh, you know, kind of carry out the sacrifice, falamma aslama, that both of them had submitted, that when both of them had submitted uh, and, and were ready to kind of take care, go through the sacrifice, it wasn't just Ibrahim who had submitted. It wasn't just Ismail who had submitted. Both of them had submitted aslama, the same root as Islam. They had both submitted themselves. They had both uh, put themselves forward in that way. They had both submitted. Um, coming from that same root of Islam, of Muslim, that this action was the action of uh, an exemplary action of faith, an exemplary action of what it means to be a Muslim, what it means to be uh, a follower of Islam. Not that you know it, it's just with respect to this connotation of, uh, of a sacrifice of a human being or anything like that, but that they had come to this point where they had um, surrendered themselves to the will of Allah. Uh, and we see that in, in, in the context of the story, that how, how, how Allah had come to, uh, you know, to, to not just stop this sacrifice, but be able to provide a substitute for it that is commemorated to this day. But in that, uh, in that sacrifice, the first thing that they sacrificed was um, that ego, was that, that, uh, that, that sense of uh, their their heart not being in it, and their their hearts were fully in it. And but it 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 did have a human experience to get to that point. You see that Ibrahim had probably seen this dream and had probably understood what it was going to mean and what it would require. But you still see him ask his son, "What do you think about this?" What that he's he's trying to process it. And same thing in in so many other instances here. But when we when we come back to we close inshallah with the element of sacrifice in our faith, as we have heard in those pulpits, like we said, that sacrifice like Ibrahim, sacrifice like Hajar, sacrifice like Ismail, they were ready to do this. Why don't you do it as well? And we take that narrative and we, we take that narrative and we see in the fullness of their sacrifice, how can we now sacrifice like them? And we see what uh, how Ibrahim sacrificed, we see how Hajar sacrificed, we see how Ismail sacrificed, we see how our Prophet Sallallahu and all those who were around him, how they sacrificed, that their sacrifice was not one that was uh, aimed at 
at, at you know it was self-serving in any way was not one that was was for their own ego or for their own personal gain their sacrifice was in sincerity their sacrifice was uh, in intentionality and their sacrifice was in true belief and mindfulness of Allah. Uh, we see that Allah tells us in the Quran and speaking to the literal sacrifice or the, the hadi, the, 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 the animal that has sacrificed that Allah lifts up that, you know, it is not the meat or the blood of the sacrifice that reaches Allah, but it is your piety, your taqwa that reaches Allah. It is your God consciousness. It is your righteousness. It is your mindfulness of Allah, your awareness. That is what reaches Allah, that Allah is, is free from any need or any desire, or any want or anything like that. Allah does not need the, the literal sacrifice here. Allah, the, the meat and whatnot that, that, that's going to uh, expire with this world. The material stuff will, will, will expire with all these things. But the things that are going to be here in the hereafter for your own benefit, for your benefit, are, is your, how you show up to that moment. So when Ibrahim and Ismail come to the space ready to go forward with this sacrifice, Allah was not in need of Ismail being sacrificed, literally. Allah was not in need of that blood to be shed unnecessarily. What Allah was in need of for them, what they were in need of, um, and what, what Allah's request in this sense lifts up, that فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَ That then once they had submitted and they're ready to go through with this, that's when this, inter that's when this interjection had come. Um, that's when the divine intervention had come, that them submitting in and of itself was the sacrifice, that they had put their hearts to rest, that they had come to um, this space where they had accepted the will of Allah. And that was the sacrifice. That was what not only was uh, lifted up, but that was what reached Allah in, in, in that sense, that this, this taqwa, this mindfulness, this uh, awareness of Allah, this consciousness of Allah, that's what uh, was what this was all about. And so when we think about ourselves in this time, and we think about what is it that we might be sacrificing, you know, for whether you are somebody that wears a hijab, whether you're someone that outwardly shows that you are a Muslim, or, or you know, you are, you're carrying your faith uh, as, as almost like a patch, and, 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 you know, just like wearing it in so many different visible ways, or you're having to carry it in different ways. Perhaps you are in work environments where your faith is not conducive to being practiced. You, you might not uh, drink the beverages that are oftentimes kind of at the center of uh, your workplace or of your social hours. You may not be, you know, a, of, a, uh, of the faith or of the uh, kind of moral practice that is commonly uh, celebrated or kind of lifted up in certain environments. And, and you may have to sacrifice with respect to abstaining from that stuff. You may have to sacrifice by making that time for your prayer. You may have to sacrifice by demonstrating or, or outwardly displaying your, uh, your, 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 you know, modeling your faith tradition or, you know, expressing uh, your, your adherence to the faith in different ways. You, you may have to sacrifice in so many different ways, but in looking at the story and looking and reflecting on Eid al -Adha and looking and reflecting on the sacrifice of Ibrahim, we ask ourselves, what is our intentionality behind it? What is that which will reach Allah? The hijab that we wear, the, uh, the, you know, the beard that we grow, the, uh, you know, ab abstention from certain things, all of these, the, 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 the different things that we are doing, the prayers that we are doing daily or whatnot, what is our reason behind them? You know, each of these things at the end of the day, Allah is not in need of any of these things. We are the ones who are in need of them, um, but they are not going to be coming with us. What's going to come with us is our intentions and, uh, and, and the deeds that we did do. And so when we look at the sacrifices we, we put forward, we ask ourselves, what, what was the reason for it? Are we doing it for ourselves? Are we doing it uh, just to, because, you know, we, we uh, have, a, there's, a, there's an egotistical reason to do it. Um, there's a self-serving reason to do it. Or are we doing it solely for the pleasure of Allah? Are we doing it for the mindfulness of Allah? That because I'm aware of Allah, because I'm conscious or cognizant of Allah, I choose to do this. I choose to abstain from this, or I choose to make this sacrifice and whatnot. So thinking about, it's not just that material that's being sacrificed. It's, it's, it's our intention. It's how our hearts submit. It's how uh, our inner selves have actually shown up. Um, and then form follows function in a way. 
but uh, it, not thinking that we can just you know write a check and cut all the, off our checks and do all these superficial things, and that that'll that'll serve its purpose. But a sacrifice comes from within. It it, it requires that uh, us taking that knife metaphorically um, to that which we are attached to, and being able to uh, to 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 cut that attachment in a way because it's it's holding us back from Allah. So when we look at this, when Allah tells us the ground that you'll never attain righteousness, you will never attain bitter, you'll never attain righteousness until you give from what you love, until you give from what you love and whatever you give, Allah is fully aware of it, that it's, you're not going to attain that level of that righteousness. They're never going to attain that, that level that you seek until you give from what you love. Uh, and, and, and you have to sacrifice, you have to, you have to give in that sense that uh, you, you live into that aspect of Islam, that it's not just a, uh, a fad, it's not just something that's cool to do, it's not just like uh, the, the new trend or whatnot to kind of have, um, it's, it's a duty, it's an obligation, but it's also a way of life, and it's a way of life that requires sacrifice in and of itself. So inshallah, as we uh, think about ourselves in relation to the story of Ismail, the story of Ibrahim, the story of Hajar, and we look at our lives today, we want to ask ourselves, what is it that we are sacrificing? And not only what is it that we are sacrificing, what, uh, what is the reason for our sacrifice? What is our intention behind the sacrificing? And if the intention is anything but Allah, is this a sacrifice that will truly benefit us? But uh, on, the, on the latter end as well, that beyond our own relationship to these sacrifices, the story of Ibrahim and the story of the, the, the sacrifices of his family lift up for us as well the complexity and the fullness, not just of the human experience, but the fullness of sacrifice that is happening around us, that uh, each of us sacrifices differently. Ibrahim's family sacrificed in so many different ways. His, uh, his son sacrificed in that moment as well when uh, you know he, he also submitted. Hajar sacrifice to raise a single boy, raise as a single mother almost uh, in this barren valley, uh, migrating for the sake of Allah, that Ibrahim sacrificed in so many different ways that all of these sacrifices built on each other, but were interconnected. And so when we think about the sacrifices we have to make, we, want, we, we, we also lift up in those moments, who sacrificed what for us to get here? Who sacrificed what for us to just be able to be in a position to make a sacrifice and who else is sacrificing what are other people sacrificing um and and being more aware of that which was around us we see in the life of our prophet that uh you know what sacrifices not only he made but what financial social familial sacrifices did khadija make did his family make for which he was then uh able to be supported and assisted um, what sacrifices did the people around the Prophet ﷺ, who didn't have much to be able to give in the first place, but the sacrifices of those like Yasir, those like Sumayya, who were persecuted minorities for their religion, giving their ultimate sacrifice, sacrificing their life. What did it mean for the Prophet ﷺ? What did it mean for us as Muslims today? You know, what, what did the sacrifice not only of, uh, our, of all of these individuals, but what is the sacrifice of uh, of our own uh, selves, what is our own sacrifice? How does that fit into this tapestry, into this religion that is that is that is kind of bound with this fabric and and tied through with this fabric of sacrifice? Where do we kind of fit in? We don't have to kind of compare what is sacrifice, whose is better, whose is more, whose less, who's not. But are we showing up with that same intentionality, that same? desire for seeking Allah's pleasure? Are we showing uh, that, uh, showing up in those same ways? Because the sacrifices we undertake don't need to be the flashiest, don't need to be the most monumental. They just, they, 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 they need to just come from the heart. They need to be sincere. And so when we holistically consider this, when we think about this, we see these sacrifices that we make day in, day out, no longer as just a obligation, no longer as just something trivial or no longer just as something very mundane, but sacrifice is being done for the purpose of benefiting ourselves, but also reconnecting us to Allah. So thinking that if we are shedding something, if we are sacrificing something, if it's our time that we are sacrificing, if it is we're sacrificing our life, if we are sacrificing our wealth, 
we are sacrificing our ego or sacrificing like our social status or whatnot, that a sacrifice made in the way of a law uh, is not one that is lost in and of itself. That when we sacrifice something or when we shed something for the sake of a law, it is not something that is uh, left unaccounted for. That it uh, may be diminished in this particular life, but it goes and it's deposited in the next life. I may go and donate part of my wealth and it may be gone today, but it's not gone in the eyes of Allah. That sacrifice is not lost in the eyes of Allah. That anything that is sacrificed in the way of Allah continues to live on and will be there in the space that we, when we need it most. So as we leave Eid al-Adha and uh, behind, as we go forward to our daily sacrifices, we ask ourselves, inshallah, what not only is it, what are we sacrificing? How are we sacrificing? What are we sacrificing? What is the intention behind our sacrifices? And what are those, uh, what, what, what is it that we hope to attain with our sacrifice? But also thinking about what more can we sacrifice because that which is sacrificed in Allah's way is not ever lost. So thinking about whether it is our time, whether it is our wealth, whether it is uh, those things that make us uh, slightly uncomfortable or the things that are making us comfortable in a way, whether it is part of our life, the, the well-being, the, uh, you know, the, the, the material wealth or anything like that, that we enjoy, the comforts that we enjoy, whatever we are sacrificing in a sense, um, seeing that in the light of Ibrahim, in the light of Ismail, in the light of Hajar and the Prophet, if they're not from the heart, if they are not uh, from deep within, then these sacrifices may not have much to offer us. But if they are like those which Ibrahim offered, which Hajar offered, which his fam their family offered, which the Prophet and his community offered, however big, however small, but coming from the heart, that uh, not only were they rewarded in this life, but also in the next. And so we ask Allah to make us amongst those as a people of sacrifice who look at our religion as one of Islam, as one of submission, and us as Muslims, as those who submit, those who put ourselves forward and submit to the will of Allah, that like our father Ibrahim, like his son Ismail, we too uh, can be amongst those that, as the Quran says, falamma aslama, that we too be amongst like them who submitted, that when they submitted and made their sacrifice, we as well, when we sacrifice, first and foremost, we submit, and that we are a people of that submission, but a people who attain a peace and a tranquility through that submission. Rabbana hablana nizwadina uluriyatina kurata ayunin majalna lil mutakina amama. That our Lord make us Muslims in full submission to you. And from our descendants and those who come after us, make those who are also in submission to you and show us our rights of worship, accept our, uh, our repentance. Indeed, you are the accepting of repentance, the merciful. Rabbana wa taqabbaldua. Rabbana ufirli wa liwalidiyya hulil mu'mina. Yomin wa'asab. That our Lord accept this uh, humble prayer from us uh, that thou art all hearing and all knowing. Uh, we ask Allah to accept all of our sacrifices and to make of our sacrifices uh, not just a uh, cut in this life, but a deposit and a blessing to come forth in the next. Inshallah. I mean, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.